Hi teachers, my name is John and I'd like to introduce you to Jamboard, one of the newest members of the Google Drive family. Now Jamboard is an unstructured space that your students can use for creativity and collaboration. Jamboard is quite a bit different than Google Slides or Docs or Drawing. It allows your students to do all kinds of interesting things like annotate, so you can give them a picture and have them draw and sketch on top of it. You can do some brainstorming where you, you know, throw out a topic and students write down as many ideas as they can uh, think on that topic. You can create mind maps and combine annotations and notes and images all together in one space. You can even do math and do some collaborative work where you provide every student a problem and everybody draws and, uh, in this case, graphs that problem together. It's a fun way to add creativity, problem solving, critical thinking into your classroom. Now, Jamboard is actually two different things. Um, it is actually a whiteboard. So if you have like a smart uh, board or a Promethean board, Jamboard is that as well. It's awesome. It's also obscenely expensive. The Jamboard you see on the screen there, that would run you about $7,000, give or take. Um, I've had a chance to use them. They're awesome, but again, very, very expensive. I'd like to see the face on your principal when you ask if you can get uh, you know, a couple of those in your, uh, your school. The good news is that it's also an app that runs for free on your mobile phone, your tablet, or a laptop. It works for Mac, PC, Chromebook, Android, iOS. It works for any platform, and you can use it completely for free right now. It works with Google Classroom, Google Meet. If you use Zoom, it'll work with Zoom as well. Uh, any learning management system, all you need is a link. You put that link in, and it works wonderfully. During this video, I'm going to give you the overview of Jamboard, how to create a Jam activity, um, some of the tools available inside of Jamboard, and then some ways to share those activities with your uh, students. Stick around at the end of this video. I'm going to share uh, some links to some Jam activities that you can use in your classroom to get started. So the first thing we need to talk about is how do you create a new Jam file? You know, there's three different ways you can do that. It really doesn't matter which one you use. You'll probably Pick one of these three because it's more convenient for you. The first option is to go to Google Drive. So here's my Google Drive account. I'm going to click on New, go down to More, and believe it or not, Jamboard is tucked right in here next to things like Google Drawing, My Maps, and Google Sites. This is my preferred way of creating Jam files because I can create those files, put them in a folder right next to all my other lessons and activities, just like if you were creating a Google Doc presentation or spreadsheet. So that's option one. Now option two is to actually go to the Jamboard app itself. Um, and you can click on the Google Waffle up at the top uh, right corner of your Google account. That's where you'll see all the different uh, apps that you have access to. And Jamboard will show up there as well. Um, and you can go here, and this will show you all your existing Jam files. So you can see what I've been working on recently. And if you click that uh, plus button in the bottom right corner, you can create a Jam file from there as well. Now, the downside to this is that you don't get an opportunity to like, put it in a folder uh, and place it next to other Google Drive files. These files are in my Drive account, but they're just kind of floating around in the general you know, My Drive folder. Um, the third option, the third way that you can create Jamboard files is really good for unplanned, unexpected collaboration. And you can do that through Google Meet. So this is the, one of the newest features of Google Meet. If you're in a meeting with your students and someone asks a question or you just have a, a moment of inspiration, you can create a new Jam file directly from Google Meet itself. So I'm going to click down here on the uh, snowman on the bottom toolbar and then up at the top you're going to see whiteboard open a jam and this will allow you to decide if you want a blank jam file or you can open one up from your Drive account if you've got one ready to go. So that's the first thing you need to know is how to create them and again you got three options you can do it from Drive you can do it from the app and you can do it from Google Meet. Now you can also uh, use the app on your phone or tablet. That works as uh, well. iOS, Android, install the app and you can create your Jam files uh, from your mobile device just like you would on the, uh, uh, the web app if you'd like. 
Now that we have a GM file, we know how to create them, let's open one up and take a look at the different tools inside of GM for structuring an activity. All right, I've got a jam file open. Let's take a quick tour of some of the controls and tools. First off, at the top of the screen, you're going to see your frame. So each page in your jam activity is called frame. Um, you can have up to 20 frames in a uh, file. Uh, to add a new frame, just click to the right and it'll add um, a new frame. You can also decide to change the background of the frame. So right up the top here, it says set background. And there are, oh, I don't know, seven or so different options. You can do uh, dots, you can do lined paper, graph paper, and then several different colored backgrounds as well. At this time, you can't upload your own background. You can only pick from the ones uh, that are there. If you ever mess up, you make a mistake, you just want to start over, you can hit the clear frame button and it just deletes everything on there and starts again from scratch. Um, let's go ahead and do a real simple activity. So maybe I'm uh, setting this up for my students. I'm gonna go ahead and use the text tool. Um, now currently I'm on the web, so I'm just using the web browser on my Chromebook. If you're on a Mac, a PC, a Chromebook, you're gonna see all of these uh, same tools. In just a minute, we'll take a look at the mobile app for Jamboard, and there's a few different controls and tools uh, that I'll introduce you to. For right now, we're gonna go ahead and add a text um, field in here and I'm gonna just a uh, simple question what is your favorite Christmas movie okay so I'm gonna change this make that real big okay so maybe that's the question my students are going to reply to um, I'm gonna share this activity with them we'll talk about that in a little bit and they can reply in a variety of ways probably the easiest and the tool that I use most frequently is the sticky note. So that's available right there in the middle of our toolbar. I'm gonna add a sticky note and I might just say home alone, okay? And I can change the color of that sticky note. We'll add it on there. And that sticky note can be moved around. It can be resized. We can tilt, um, we can edit. Um, so again, very collaborative, very open-ended. Um, space that we have here. So we can add a sticky note, but that can get a little boring. So another option is to use the image tool. So let's go to image. We can search for home alone. This is Google image search right inside of Jamboard. I'm going to select one of the options and I can insert that image right there as well. You can upload your own image uh, or you can pick from uh, Google Drive or from the web as I've done. Now, a third option is just the annotation option, just drawing, free draw. Now, I am on a touchscreen Chromebook, and I have a digital pen, which makes this a little bit easier. If you don't have touchscreen devices, then the sticky note, the image, is going to be a better choice uh, for this activity. So I can just go up here to the pen tool. Uh, I can select a different color, and I could just free write home alone. You can also, you know, circle, draw, add annotations around things, you know, something like that. So those are some of the uh, controls and tools for the web app. Let's take a look at the mobile app for Jamboard because that's going to give you a couple of bonus features that are pretty cool. Now, it's important that you have an understanding of whether your students will be using the web app, which we just looked at, or the mobile app for Android phones, tablets, iPhones, iPads, etc. Now on my Chromebook, which I'm using right now, I can access the Android version of Jamboard. Your Chromebooks might be able to do that as well. Check with your IT director uh, to confirm. Let me just highlight a couple of features of the mobile app. Um, the first are the assistive drawing tools. So I'm gonna go here to the pen tool over on the toolbar. Uh, right now I'm on the regular pen. I'm going to click the arrow and at the bottom you're going to see three assistive drawing tools. The first is handwriting recognition. So I can handwrite something and it will convert it to text. Then I have magic shape so I can just free draw a circle and it converts it into a uh, perfect circle. But the third, and this is my favorite, is auto draw. So I can uh, sketch, I'm not a very good artist, I'm just going to sketch a simple Christmas tree attempt to anyways all right and Google is going to look at my drawing and attempt to say oh that looks like 
uh, in this case, a lightning bolt, a <laughs> palm tree, etc. And then I can pick from one of the shapes that appears at the bottom of the screen. So it converts my kind of uh, you know, stick figures into something that's kind of cool, and then I can drag that drawing, um, you know, across uh, the screen uh, wherever I want to. So it's a fun way to just add some shapes, some doodles uh, to your Jamboard activity. Now, the mobile app has access to all the other, you know, features of Jamboard that we've looked at. We can add sticky notes, images, but um, there's a couple of, again, bonus ones. We can actually use our camera on our mobile device to take a picture and throw it into Jamboard. Uh, we can add stuff from Google Drive, so you can actually add a snapshot of a slide presentation or a Google Doc and then annotate over top of it. Or, and this is fun for the classroom, there are a series of stickers. Now, it's pretty limited. There's only a few. You can't add more. There's nowhere to download or install more. But just quick um, uh, responses, so thumbs up, thumbs down, check mark, um, yes, no kind of uh, things. We can just quickly add those in here. I'll see uh, teachers will use these for like poll questions and things like that where students just add their own thumbs up or thumbs down to a series of questions. So it's a quick overview of some of the additional features and controls available through the mobile app compared with the web app. The final thing we need to look at is once you have a jam activity, how do you get it to your students? All right, well, now that we've taken a quick look at the features and capabilities of Jamboard, you have a chance to set something up for your class, but how do you get these activities to your students? There's three options. Uh, the first is to just share the Jam file, just like you would any other Google document or presentation. So I cleaned up my uh, favorite Christmas movie activity, and I'm just gonna go over here to the share button. Uh, and if I know the people I want to collaborate with, I can enter their names, share it with them, give them view or edit access, just like a Google Drive uh, file. Now, if you don't have all of your student email addresses or just want to simplify it, if you're using, um, you know, Edmodo, Schoology, Canvas, uh, any other learning management system, you can always go down here to the Get Link option. Uh, change that to anyone within your domain can edit so that your students have access. I'm going to change that give them editing access, and then it's gonna copy that link and paste it into um, an activity inside of, again, Canvas, Edmodo, Schoology, whatever you're using, and your students will be able to get in and make changes to your Jam file. So that's option number one, share the link. If you use Google Classroom, this is super easy because Jamboard is part of Google Drive. Let me open up my Classroom. So here's a course that I'm teaching. I can just create a new activity, a new assignment. We'll say favorite Christmas movie. Hit the add button from Google Drive. And because I just recently edited this file, it's gonna pop up uh, right here in my recents. There we go. And just like any other Google Drive file, you can view, edit, make a copy as needed for your students. The third option is for those of you who teach virtually using Google Meet, we kind of uh, teased this earlier. Here's a Google Meet session. I can go down here to the three dots on the Meet toolbar at the bottom, go up to Whiteboard, and I'm going to open an existing Jam file from Google Drive. Again, because I recently edited this file, it'll pop up as one of the first ones. I'll hit the open jam button, and this is automatically going to put the link to that jam file in the chat for my Google Meet session. It'll also share the file with whoever is currently in the meeting. So it's very convenient if you wanna collaborate with your students live through Google Meet, that's a third and final option. Jamboard is a wonderful way to add more creativity to your classroom. It's great for those unstructured activities that are kind of fun. Before you head out, make sure you check out the playlist that I've created on Jamboard, including five easy activities that you can use with Jamboard to encourage that creativity in your classroom.